Publishing a book can be incredibly confusing. In addition to writing the thing and then revising it to make it as strong as it can possibly be, there's a really steep learning curve when you are trying to understand your publishing options and the steps that you need to take to see your book in physical form. I've seen a lot of discussions among the writing community online regarding the traditional publishing process specifically, which is when you are looking to get your book published by one of the major publishing houses in the US, which requires a literary agent's representation. These publishing houses are also known as the Big Five, potentially the Big Four if the proposed merger between Penguin Random House and Simon & Schuster goes through. In these online discussions, there are a lot of aspiring authors making negative comments about the traditional publishing process, and it seems like some of the people making these comments don't fully understand how the industry actually works. So today I want to talk through some of these bad takes about the publishing industry and the publishing process and give you the truth behind how traditional publishing operates and what you can do as an author to position yourself for success. Previously, I have worked at one of the top tier literary agencies in New York City, as well as two of the big five publishing houses in the editorial department. So I'm going to bring that expertise and insight and hopefully demystify and unravel some of these bad takes so that you feel more empowered and enabled to pursue whichever publishing path is right for you. Now, if you are at all interested in the book publishing industry, I recommend subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Every week, I either post a video with insight about the publishing process like today, or I talk about tactical tips for improving your writing and your story, and I'd love to have you around for all of that. I also have a special resource available to all of my viewers in the description below. It is called my free story self-assessment. What that is going to do is help you identify the strengths and weaknesses in your current work in progress so that you can revise the draft with that in mind and understand where you potentially need to improve and how to take that story to the next level. That's also going to automatically sign you up for my newsletter where I give exclusive tips and insights that are not available on this channel. So all that being said, let's dive into the first bad take about publishing that I want to talk about, and that is traditionally published authors have no control over their book. I've seen various comments from people who are doubtful about the traditional publishing process because they have the impression that signing with a publishing house means that they're really relinquishing all control to the publishing house and they are really going to have no input in how the book gets published or what it looks like. Now, it's important to know that when you sign with a traditional publisher, you are agreeing to a partnership in which they are going to pay you a sum of money for the rights to publish your book and you are going to have access to all of the resources available at the publishing house. That includes their editorial team, design team, marketing team, publicity team, sales team, etc. They are going to walk you through all the steps that you need to take to get your book published and they're really going to usher you through each of those steps using all of the resources that they have as the publisher. But just because you are using the publishing house's resources and personnel, absolutely does not mean that you are relinquishing all control of your book to those people and to the publisher. Authors who are new to publishing or who don't quite understand how the process works seem to be particularly concerned that editors at publishing houses are going to take the manuscript and then make changes and big revisions to your story without you being aware of it. And then your book is going to get published and it's going to be unrecognizable to you. Now, as someone who worked in the editorial departments at two of these publishers, I can assure you that that is absolutely not the case. Authors are always completely tuned in and aware of all of the suggested edits that the editors at the publishing house are making. And in fact, the author is the one receiving those edits and implementing them to the manuscript themselves. There's really never a case where changes are being made without your permission or approval. Maybe the one exception would be fixing a typo or something very small grammatically or a spelling error, something like that. But any content changes, certainly any major changes to how the story unfolds, you are absolutely going to be doing that yourself and you are going to have those conversations with your editor. And in fact, maybe your editor makes a suggestion that you don't agree with 
and you talk it through and come up with a different solution that addresses both of your concerns. That happens all the time. Editing truly is a collaboration. I believe that as an independent book editor, and I have learned that from working with editors at publishing houses because they also take that collaborative approach. So I want to assuage any of the concerns that you have that editors are going to mark up your book and change it and then publish it without your approval. Similarly, authors seem to be very concerned about the publisher coming up with a cover that they don't like and don't approve of. Again, you are going to be a part of this conversation. While the publisher is going to take the lead on designing potential covers, you are absolutely going to be a part of that conversation and your input on the cover will be considered. The next bad take about the traditional publishing process is that agents and publishers are only looking for diverse authors at this time. There seems to be quite a bit of anxiety from authors who are not a member of what we call an underrepresented community in publishing, which includes BIPOC authors, LGBTQ authors, and disabled authors. And this stems from an increased prevalence of literary agents and publishers calling out that they are seeking stories from members of these underrepresented communities. And that's because their voices and their stories have historically been underrepresented and even suppressed in the book publishing industry and the commercial book world at large. Now, just because literary agents and publishers are calling out that they are interested in stories from these communities absolutely does not mean that someone who does not fall into one of those communities is out of luck and is never going to get published. The reality is that there are absolutely still authors getting book deals and selling successfully who do not fall into one of these underrepresented communities. And if you need proof, just look at any bestseller list and you will find a number of authors who do not match one of those specific underrepresented categories. So remember that just because agents and publishers are more interested than potentially they have been in the past for diverse voices and diverse stories, that does not mean that they are not interested in a very compelling and exciting, intriguing story from someone who is not a member of one of those communities. There really is room for everyone and everyone's stories. All this really means is that there may be a bit more competition among writers from all backgrounds, because now room in the publishing world is finally being made for people who have never even had a seat at the table before and who have never had the privilege of being a part of the conversation. I really don't see this as a zero sum game where you know one person is now being lifted up and being published means that other people are being put down and cannot be published. That's not how we're seeing it play out. And I really would encourage you to sit down and focus on making your book the best it can be. Make sure you are querying strategically and stay optimistic about your publishing path. The next bad take about the traditional publishing process I want to talk about is that lower royalty rates are always bad for the author. In debates about traditional publishing versus self-publishing, I often see writers bringing up the differential in royalty rates, and I completely understand why. It can be really shocking for a new author to see that in a book deal with a traditional publishing house, your royalty rates are going to be significantly lower than if you self-published and pretty much retained all of your royalties and rights. But what you need to understand about a book deal with a traditional publisher is that in addition to earning royalties on each book sale, which is a percentage of the sale that you as the author get back, the publisher is going to pay you what we call an advance. And this is a lump sum that is not tied to the amount of book sales that you make. You are guaranteed that amount whether you sell one copy or a million copies. So depending on how many book sales you make, going the traditional route and having that guaranteed advance paid to you upfront can actually result in you making more on the book deal than if you self-published and had a higher royalty rate but ultimately didn't make enough sales on your book to make back all the money that you got through the advance via the publishing house. Also remember that with self-publishing, you are going to be responsible for paying for all of the related services that you need to publish your book upfront, including editing, design, any marketing you want to do, formatting, etc. So you have to factor that in too before you are actually making money on your book. Now, of course, money is not the only factor 
or even necessarily the most important factor that you should consider when you are thinking about which publishing path is right for you, but it is really important for you to understand how it works and know that just because you are possibly making a lower royalty percentage does not necessarily mean you are making less money via a traditional publisher. I have a whole other video that goes into book deals with traditional publishers, so I recommend checking that out to better understand how the advance and royalties work together. The next bad take on traditional publishers that I want to talk about is the idea that classic or canonical authors wouldn't get published today. Sometimes in response to tips on how to write more effectively or increase your chances of getting a literary agent interested in representing your manuscript and selling it to a publisher, I'll see comments and responses from writers saying that certain classic or canonical authors didn't follow that advice. And the idea is that the advice is somehow negated because this book that was published decades or even centuries ago didn't follow those same tips. This often comes up, especially regarding length, as many works that we consider classic pieces of literature are either substantially shorter or substantially longer than novels that would be published today. And so people sometimes use this discrepancy as perceived evidence that publishing industry professionals don't have good taste or don't know what they're doing because they would theoretically reject this classical work of literature because it doesn't match today's standards or what today's readership is looking for. I think it's important to consider here that it is completely okay for the literary geniuses of yesteryear to have operated and published under different circumstances and potentially different standards than we have in today's publishing world. We can still appreciate and admire and love the style and approach and techniques of authors from the past while understanding that books that are commercially successful today might operate a bit differently and have their own unique style. Personally, I think we need to separate from the idea that classical or canonical authors are somehow better than authors who are best-selling and being published today because who's to say that authors who are being published today aren't actually going to become part of the literary canon in the future, right? I think we can appreciate both for their own unique stylistic choices, for their own unique approach to story. And while we can and should certainly learn from authors who were published decades or centuries ago, we shouldn't necessarily put them on a pedestal and say that every author today needs to perfectly align with this type of style or their specific technique. They're different, they're operating in different publishing landscapes, and that is completely okay. The final bad take about the publishing industry that I wanna talk about today is that literary agents don't care about querying authors. If you are in the querying trenches currently, I totally understand that you're likely going through a roller coaster of emotions. Maybe you're feeling disheartened and discouraged and even want to give up. I understand how tough it is to not hear back from literary agents or only get a stark formulaic response that really gives you no sense of how they considered your work or if they even read it. Everyone wants more of a personal touch when they are giving their creative work to someone and asking them for feedback on it. And when it comes to querying, you often don't get that. But the truth is that as much as this process sucks and as unemotional and curt as literary agents might seem in their email responses, know that it is not because they don't care about their queries. Remember that the literary agent's job is to scout talent and sign on clients whose books they love and whose books they want to sell to a publisher. So ultimately, they need authors to query them to do their job, to make a living. The reason that they take so long and potentially ghost you and potentially give you a formulaic response that wasn't what you were hoping for is simply because they are extremely backlogged because as we know, there are many more authors seeking literary agents than there are literary agents accepting new clients. And they take a long time to go through their queries because they do want to give each query its due consideration, but it simply takes a very long time to get through all of those queries and give each of those queries enough time to properly consider them. So as much as the process sucks, as flawed as the system may be, know that it is not because they don't care. They absolutely do care, otherwise they wouldn't be open to queries. If you want a bit more of my insight on the current querying landscape, which you might know is 
particularly tough right now, check out my video where I talk about querying in 2022 and what all is going on in the industry. I hope this insight helped you better understand the truth behind some of the negative comments about the traditional publishing industry and helped you see how it actually works and has you feeling a bit more optimistic about your own publishing options. Let me know in the comments if you've heard of any of these bad takes before or if you have heard of any others. And if you are in the process of trying to figure out if traditional publishing is right for you, check out my video on the pros and cons of traditional publishing. I truly believe in educating yourself on all of your publishing paths available, the pros and cons of each, and choosing the path that ultimately works best for your individual situation. One is not necessarily better than the other by any means. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me continue growing this amazing community and bringing you new content every week. And don't forget your free story self-assessment waiting for you in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.